What's up, Pulsarians? My name is Frost McRoss, and today we're gonna take a look at our very own project, Poly Pulsar. This is the fourth layer, it's called Gamma, and in this video, basically, we'll be looking at pretty much every aspect of the project in details, and we're gonna explain it to you guys so you can enjoy it fully. So without further ado, I'm gonna let my friend Dest kick it off with the basics. Let's take a look at the tokenomics of this project. We are currently on layer gamma. There were previous layers to this project, as you can see here, and that is the reason why I'm bringing that up because we are currently on the gamma layer of this project. This project is a polygon farm with multiple playable games and also multiple deflationary mechanisms in place, all of which will be covered thoroughly throughout this video. This ecosystem has two native tokens, GPOL and GBNT. GPOL is the first token in this ecosystem. It's also known as Gamma Pulsar token. It is the farming native token of this ecosystem. Currently it has a block emission rate of eight, but this may be adjusted according to inflation or as the project progresses. Of that emission, 9% will go to developer addresses for future development, partnerships, marketing, costs, and community rewards. The initial supply of this token is 12 million and it will have an unlimited max supply. Many of the people involved in this project got their pre-sale tokens via NFT sales from the previous layer. The only way to currently get GPOL is either earn it via farming or buy it on the open market. The secondary token in this ecosystem is GBNT or Gamma Bounty token. This token is different than your average DeFi project token in the sense that there is no fixed emission. So there's also no farm that will earn you GBNT. But in theory, since there's no fixed emission rate on this token, it should be more rare and more valuable as it can only be created and earned by playing Bounty Hunter. After earning your GBNT by playing Bounty Hunter, it can be either used to sell on the open market or play additional games that could net you more tokens. These two additional games that you can play are Polygalactic Hunter and the Pulse Arena. As you can see in this infograph, there's sort of a cycle to this where you farm, earn, and harvest GPOL, play Bounty Hunter to earn GBNT, and then you take that GBNT to either play Galactic Hunter or Pulse Arena to earn even more. All these games mentioned also act as a sink as there are deflationary mechanisms at play for each. And we'll discuss what those look like in the respective individual games segments. Let's first show you how to purchase some G pull and also provide liquidity to this project so you can get going on the first leg of this ecosystem. So I'm going to come over to the Gamma Poly Pulsar dot farm site and I'm going to go to trade and I want to buy some G pull. So I like to right click and open that up in a new tab and it's going to open the website called Polycat Finance and we are going to want to buy some G pull. So let's say I want to buy 10 G pull, but I don't want to use my Matic. I want to use my USDC and as you can see, 10 G pull costs 57 cents. One of the important things to mention here is this gear icon. So we might need to actually increase our slippage. As you can see, mine's up to 9%. That is gonna be necessary because there is an 8% tax on this project. So you always wanna make sure your slippage tolerance is up to at least 9% for this project. And as you can see, these 10 G pulls are gonna cost me 57 cents. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap. And then I'm gonna confirm my swap. And I like to edit my gas fees to make this go a little quicker. And let's go up to six and save. Good to go. So now that we bought this G pull, we're gonna turn it into liquidity for the project. So we're gonna go back to the Poly Pulsar farm page. And in this trade tab, there should be a liquidity. We bought G pull, so we wanna pair it with W Matic. So we're gonna right click on that, open a new tab. Again, it's gonna open Polycat Finance. And we're going to put the 10 G pull that we just bought, then it will automatically dictate equal parts of Matic. So it's saying 10 G pull is worth 0.34 Matic. So it's putting equal parts Matic and G pull into this liquidity. So I'm going to hit supply. 
There might be an additional click here where you have to actually approve it. I have already obviously supplied liquidity, so I don't have to approve this contract anymore because I've already done it. So I'm going to increase my gas fees. Increasing the gas fees aren't necessary. I just do it because it goes quicker. Uh, I don't like to wait. So, And transaction is now confirmed. So now we should have our liquidity. And we're going to want to go over to the Poly Pulsar page again and click on the farms. Now again, I've already approved this contract here. But we're going to stake our gpool slash matic lp that we just put together so we're going to click on the plus here and as you can see i have 1.5584 whatever matic gpool lp right here so i'm going to hit max so i stake all of it and that is the lp we just put together so i'm going to confirm that transaction and transaction is now confirmed so we yep and we just saw this g pull slash matic lp staked increase so we are now staked and now that we've staked our liquidity let me show you how to harvest so as you can see there's a harvest button right here where you can harvest the g pull that you've earned but it's also on the home page here so you could also potentially do it here so two ways to do the same thing i will hey siri stop so two ways to do the same thing. I will warn you there is a two hour countdown timer on this. So you can only harvest every two hours. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest that just to show you what that looks like. Again, you'll get a transaction to confirm. And let's save this. Confirm. And transaction was confirmed. So I just harvested this G pool and it was put into my wallet now. So now that we staked our liquidity, you know how to harvest. We're going to take those to the Bounty Hunter game. Alright, so you did the farming, you did the harvesting, so now it's time to play the games. There are three games you can play on Pulsar, but if all you have is G-Pull to start with, well you gotta play Bounty Hunter. It's pretty much the first game that everybody plays in order to get that sweet GBNT. So first thing you have to do is buy yourself a Hunter. You need to choose a tier that fits your budget. There are three tiers you can choose from and basically with the lower tiers you pay less and the rewards are smaller and the higher tier you pay more and the rewards are bigger but no matter what tier you choose they all have the same odds and rewards ratio and you can have a hunter in each tier if you want just not at the same time only one alive at a time but the game will remember each tier's stats separately once you have your hunter you are ready to play the first mission which is called eradicate the bugs and i'm gonna try to play this game right now when my 50x hunter that i just bought um this is my first time with that tier so i'm starting at level one and uh, there you go mission in progress and you don't have a hunter well that uh, that sums it up the outcome I just got for my first mission is critical failure. It's one of the four possible outcomes for every mission. And basically critical failure is the only outcome you don't want. When you get critical failure, whatever the mission cost, you just lost that money. That's no good. What you want is any of the three other outcomes. You get great success, which is the best, which is double what you paid for in Gpool in GBNT, you got success, which is the equal amount of G pool that you receive in GBNT as a reward, or mediocre success, which is half, but still, um, depending on the price of G pool versus GBNT, should get you about even. That means no profit, but no loss. So, all things considered, not too bad. And this is what I like the most about bounty hunter basically is that the odds are in favor of the player you're not supposed to lose constantly it does happen i've played a lot of games and it definitely does happen i think i have the record for the worst streak of all time on bounty hunter i lost like something like 17 critical failure out of 22 missions i think i hold the record for the worst and I, I can tell you with assurance that it's still very profitable in the long term. Sooner or later, the law of averages will bring you to profit. From my experience. Let's play another one. Now, I'm not going to read the stories to you because I don't want to spoil them in case you, you haven't read them before. But uh, they're really cool. And here's a fun fact. 
Knox, who's the founder of Polypulsar, is actually the one who wrote all these stories by himself, which is quite funny, I think. Quite impressive. And that second mission was a mediocre success, which is not ideal, but still a lot better than critical failure. Let's play one more. All right, better result this time. I got success. I'm now on a roll. I won two in a row. I'm now at level two. So how this works basically is depending on the type of success you get, you get a certain amount of XP. And uh, by gaining XP, you soon gain level. And by gaining levels, you get better odds of getting better outcomes for each mission. Here, come on, man. Show me what you got. Unfortunately, imagine. Oh, that's not too bad. All right. Another success. I'm on a roll. Three in a row. I'm not dying anymore. This is good. I'm in profits now. Definitely in profit. Here, missions completed is three, and I am more than halfway to level three. This is good. All right. Apparently, I don't have a hunter anymore, which is not a good sign. Guessing that means I, he died somehow, right? Yeah, he did. So when your hunter dies, you lose 6% of the total amount of XP your hunter has and you have to buy yourself a new hunter. So this is what I'm going to do right now. And once that's done, you, I can continue playing like nothing ever happened with a new hunter. Brand new. Oh, this is good. This is good. Hell yeah, that's a great success. That is so good. This is a, uh, how much is it? It costs 250 G pool to play the mission and I received 500 GBNT in return. So considering the prices right now, this is very good, man. All right, so I've been playing a couple more games and I've been doing pretty good actually. As you can see, I'm now at level six, almost level seven. I'm uh, having a four win streak right now and things are looking very good for me. Let's play one last mission, see how this one goes. Oh crap, I died. Well, that's not good, but that's not too bad. I'm actually still at level seven, so it's going pretty well. I just want to show you guys my hunter, which is uh, uh, the biggest tier, the 100X. And currently, right now, I'm at level 83, which sounds good, but a couple of hours ago, I was actually at level 100. I kept playing because it's such a great way to swap the G-Pool that you harvest uh, from farming into GBNT without paying the taxes from swapping. So as you can see, I've played close to 1200 missions. I've had a success, a success rate of uh, uh, around 65%. I'm not using a calculator right now. I think it's about 65% and it's pretty good. It's pretty much uh, what it's supposed to be. Um, let me just show you the actual odds for Bounty Hunter. Once you've played a couple of games, well, congratulations, you have helped the entire ecosystem of the project by burning your G-Pool and you are now in possession of some very valuable GBNT, which you then can use to play one of two games. The first one, which is Pulse Arena. In Pulse Arena, you will buy yourself a pet a little monster and you will go into battle against other players pets and try to win enough to get on the leaderboard and gain some great rewards it costs 15 gbnt to buy a pet they all have the same stats to start with the only difference between them basically is how cute they are so you choose the pet you want all right i'm gonna name my pet micrasis which is a funny pun i think I came up with that in about 10 seconds and I gotta say I'm quite proud of myself. So it's Macrasis, that's the name of my pet. And let's see if Macrasis knows how to fight. Oh, I can click on matchmake. When the matchmake button turns green, you can click on it, confirm the transaction. And usually this goes through, the, through chain link, takes about a minute. And then you can uh, look at the results. Here, I can click on start the fight. And uh, let's see how this one goes against 329. Let's see how this fight goes. Doesn't start very well for McCrasis. Oh, wow. That's a zero right there. Yeah, this is not the start I was hoping for. Yeah, this is looking like McCrasis is getting annihilated. What I'm hoping for, oh my God, is that at some point he's gonna wake up and start hitting and hitting and hitting the opponent. Come on. 
Because so far I, have was, I haven't thrown almost any hit. All right, there you go. A five, this is good. Come on, I need more. I need so much more to beat 329. I want to win. I want to show you guys that I'm good, that I can win. Come on, the Macrasus is good. It's not up to me, really. I don't have anything to do. If Macrasus sucks, it's not my fault, all right? Uh, this is going much better now. It's another zero. Come on. Er, there you go, a 15. A 15 is good. Um, I think that he's about to hit me now. Oh, 25 and that's it. It's over. I won. Macrasus won the first match. And now, as you can see, um, total matches is one. Total matches is one, total wins is one, and uh, there you go. Um, I'm, gain I'm gaining points to get on the leaderboard eventually. Let's play once more. All right, we got a match. I got a match against uh, $5 Handy. <laughs> Let's see how this one goes. It's not a good start for me, but actually this is encouraging. Because last time I won when I had a horrible start. Uh, now this is getting pretty even now. Oh, actually, I'm getting the upper hand now. I like that. This is looking good. Looking good for Macrasses right now. $5 handy. Doesn't sound very appetizing right about now. He's getting destroyed. There's a 10 on his side. That's good for him. Ooh, 25 and that's it. He's dead. Never stood a chance. See you next time. $5 handy. All right. As you can see, I now have three matches done. I won twice. I lost once. You didn't see it because I don't want you to see me cry. I'm a sore loser and I cry a lot. All right. We got another fight coming. It's against fight. It's a fight against fight. So original, man. Wow. How did you come up with that name? And here I was proud of my McCrassus and he comes up with fight the pet fighter that's amazing man all right the fight is on and it's quite even right now uh both of us exchange exchanging hits and um it seems to be in my favor well not anymore it's very very even even matchup i like that uh, i don't like the fact that mccrasis is almost dead <laughs> as i'm saying that not looking too good right now another 20 and this is this is, come on, you can do it. A 25, I need more than 25. I need a, another 25, come on. You can do it, McCrassus. Give us the 25. A 15, a 15 is good. It's, it's pretty even right now. And a, another 15, and fight is dead. So uh, I want another one. Now this is interesting. The picture of your pet will evolve as you win more matches, making your pet stronger. Now let's see where I'm up on the leaderboard. And as you can see, I'm number 13, which is pretty good. I'm actually quite impressed how high I got uh, by playing so few games. If you can get on the leaderboard and stay there until the timer ends, you will get some sweet rewards. The rewards vary each day and they will be bigger for special events like we had in the past for Fight Night, which was amazing by the way. Nox, the founder, was participating and uh, talking sh with people in the telegram uh, everybody was having a lot of fun and uh, you get big rewards for these special events when the rewards are distributed the score of the top 20 players are reset those who didn't have rewards keep their scores and have an advantage for the next reward distribution especially number 21 which then becomes number one this way even if you play less than other players, you still get a chance to enter the leaderboard eventually. Like I said, players in the leaderboard will get many types of rewards, mostly GPool and USDC, which are the standard rewards. And after the reward distribution, scores for the top 20 players will be reset. However, number of wins and pet rarity will not be reset after price distribution. The leaderboard will keep track of the top 20 players, and these players will share the rewards in the pool according to these numbers. The last and newest game at the time of this video is Polygalactic Hunter.
This game is much like Bounty Hunter in the sense that you'll be purchasing a hunter and sending that hunter out on missions to potentially earn rewards. However, there's a few differences. This game actually brings external utility to this project by incorporating external tokens. You can earn additional tokens such as Arcadium, Polydoge, and even WF. Your hunter will be able to level up by completing missions as well as earning rewards in different tokens. Some of these missions are set up so you statistically will make a profit by playing. And you can see this listed as the player's edge. For example, this mission here has a player's edge of 95%. Now what this means is the odds of success, mediocre success, or great success are unchanged. However, the rewards distributed make this mission more profitable and in the player's corner. So let's take a look at this mission for example. It was the alien one. Defend the locals against the bug invasion. Current cost is 60 GBNT, which is around $5. And here you can see the potential rewards for the missions. So the lowest tier success earns you $6. So it costs about $5 to play, but your lowest tier of success is $6. So you're already making a dollar. Regular old success will net you $12 and great success could earn you $24. But as you can see, this mission has a required level to play of 76, meaning your bounty hunter has to be level 76 in order for you to do this mission. And that brings up our next point. Leveling up your bounty hunter can unlock higher tier missions as well as slightly better chances at success in these missions. Since my bounty hunter isn't level 76 yet, I'm unable to play this mission, so I'll show you a different one that we can play. So just to show you, I'm going to approve the contract here so I can buy a bounty hunter. I'm going to approve the contract here so I can show you I'm buying a polygalactic hunter. And we're going to look at the missions page. Currently I can play the Poly Doge mission because it only requires level 1 and it has a player edge of 35.8%. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to click on the Poly Doge and this one is the level required to play. I'm going to click on the Poly Doge tab and go to the mission. So mission cost for this is 65 GBNT and here are the potential rewards. 1 billion poly doge for mediocre success, 2 billion and great success for 4 billion. So let's start this mission. All right, so mission was complete. Let's take a look at the results. And I want to see the important thing. I want to see if I win some money. So I won 1 billion poly doge and currently poly doge is 0.000045. So let's do a little calculation here. And I won $4.5. Let's see how much it costs to actually play this. So it costs 65 GBNT. So let's see, 65 and the current price is 0 0.073. <laughs> <So> I actually <laughs> lost money here. But that's because I got the lowest tier of success. So if I were to get the regular success, I'd be doubling it. And if I got great success, I'd get four times this. I'm going to do it. We're going to do this again. Oh, I can't. But that also brings up a good point. There is a mission cooldown on many of these. So I have to wait three hours, 56 minutes till I can do this mission again. That is to prevent me from just rinse and repeat playing these missions over and over and over and over and taking all the profits. So this Polygalactic Hunter game also has aspirations to be a launch pad of sorts where new projects could launch and piggyback off this game to gain followers from Pulse Area and distribute pre-sale tokens. Most importantly though, this game acts as an additional burn mechanism for G-Pull and GBNT. GBNT is burned and needed to buy a hunter and additionally, g Pole and GBNT are needed most of the time to play some of these games. As well as the deflationary mechanisms present in the games, there's a few additional details we want to point out. One of these of importance is the transfer tax. This infograph shows you during which transactions you will be taxed on. And there is an 8% tax on g Pole as well as GBNT. 
And now 8% is notably high and there's been plenty of complaints about this. However, it acts as an incredible deflationary mechanism. Also, it keeps people in the ecosystem and playing the games, which is after all the whole point of this project to play games. Of this 8% tax on GPOL, 7% is immediately and automatically burned. 1% of it will be reflected back into the reward pool of the leaderboard. This is the leaderboard from Pulse Arena. GBNT will also have an 8% tax, all of which will be burned. Now while some people are initially turned off by this 8% tax, it's actually done a really good job of reducing the inflation in this project and keeping the burn rate very high. Also, everyone interacting with this project is paying it, so it's not like some are and others aren't. It also incentivizes people to play the games, which again, is the purpose of this project. Additionally, if you're playing games such as Polygalactic Hunter, you have an additional opportunity to potentially skirt the tax on top of making some profit via the non-native tokens. Overall, this project has been tweaked and refined over the past layers. This gamma layer is proving that all the previous hard work has paid off. The project has not only gained the respect of many other DeFi projects and DeFi users, but it is also becoming a launch pad that new projects will be utilizing to get off the ground. It's nice to see this project continue to push into new territories with gaming still being their main focus. The Poly Galactic Hunter is a nice addition to the ecosystem that brings in more and also an external use case. Via all the automatic built-in deflationary mechanism, it is also proving its stability. Typically, you see DeFi farms dissolve to nothing very quickly. While there was a sharp drop in price early after liquidity was provided, the price has been relatively stable since then, except for the occasional Bitcoin crash that everybody hates. I look forward to seeing what the future holds for this project because now that it's been released and become more stable, the team will be able to focus on delivering on their vision for their end game. And based on what I've read, it sounds like it has potential to be something big, especially in the crypto slash DeFi slash blockchain gaming space. In the shorter terms, there are plans for an NFT marketplace and also animated missions, which I heard are coming very soon. And I think those will be a great addition. And I see a huge potential in the NFT marketplace. But that's all for this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel as shortly we'll be releasing a series of videos bringing reviews where we're gonna be reviewing blockchain crypto games. Thank you and peace out Pulsarians.